In this House of Logic video, uh, I'm going to demonstrate how to enable nested virtualization in Hyper-V to allow you to install Proxmox as a, a nested um, host slash guest. So what you can see here uh, on this um, terminal session in Hyper-V is that I've attempted to install Proxmox within a Hyper-V virtual machine, which is simply called Proxmox on HV. And um, what it's telling me is that no support for hardware accelerated KVM virtualization is detected. So this is basically saying, we don't have the option here to actually run a hypervisor. So if I hit OK, then that uh, basically the, the installation will abort. Um, or certainly, <laughs> will, if it continues, it, well, you won't be able to do what you want to do. Um, so let's just turn that off. And what you need to do within PowerShell, and it's not available, I don't believe, in the GUI, um, is to go and actually set the um, exposed virtualization extensions options on the VM. So you've got set VM processor is your PowerShell command, then you give it the VM name and expose virtualization extensions true and then if we hit enter that should go through if I hit enter again then I'm focused on the right window so there's no output for that um, but that tells us that ha that has actually been successful so if I now go and start that machine up again and reopen the connection window then hopefully we can oops we can get through and uh, do the installation properly so we'll choose the graphical installation i've already set the machine up obviously and created it and uh, and set up a um, an iso um, for doing the installation but that's not particularly exciting to watch so i've skipped ahead on those bits and we'll just give this a moment or two and i may cut ahead in the video to save a bit of time No, it wasn't even necessary. Um, so straight away, rather than giving us the warning now, it's gone into the end user's license agreement. So I can now click agree. I can choose whatever disk I want. And then I can click through the remainder of the options. Um, so we can just pop in some password details. And... Pop in a valid email address and basically we off we go and we can use whatever we're using there. Um, I'm not paying particular attention to the networking details, but obviously if you're doing this in real life, then um, then that's what you want to be doing, making sure that the addresses being used um, match what you uh, intend for the network you're working on. Anyway, I'm just going to let that, um, that finish off. I know that that installation will complete. I've got another video on the channel which shows how to do the installation, and um, so we're going to leave it there. Uh, thanks very much for watching. I hope this has been useful to someone, and um, otherwise, uh, yes, please like and subscribe um, uh, if that's your kind of thing. Otherwise, catch you next time. Thanks very much. Bye now.